All right, all right. Look at all these Drekos. We could start shearing them soon. All right, so I need plastic vent here so that we could release all the chlorine. Oh, the CO2 started to uh, even out. All right, so this is going to go back to chlorine. I mean, uh, carbon dioxide. So the chlorine is leveling back down, which is good. It's starting to spill over. That's amazing. We could mine all that out. That's a decon. We need to start doing that. This is a mine out. And then we need to trim that. Nice. He is the king. Mama's the king. It is what it is, man. Alright, so I guess this crusher is doing a pretty good job. A lot of gases. A lot of CO2. A lot of chlorine, too. And as we mine, we should be releasing more. Now, I wanted to get suits today. I wonder if we'll get to that point. I mean, I could make suits, right? That's never going to be a problem. Oh, you know what we should do? We should mine this out. Because I can make a separate room up top. Ooh, I actually like that. I like that idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. And I'm probably going to have to keep this, so I have to deconstruct this layer. Which is fine. Put the tile there. Ethanol is doing pretty good. My pea dirt, though, it's not really going up. All right, so right now we need to make space. We need to clear gas. We need to clean, well, not clean, produce oxygen. And then I need to make a room for my ethanol. And I want to try to get a little bit of suits up, but that's going to require oxygen, right? Max gas pressure. So we don't miss anything, right? Like we don't need salt. Salt right there, actually. It's not bad. And then I just need to do something about the uh, cold salt slush. Since we're accumulating here, I'm really not too worried. Oh, the hot pea dirt, dude. Starting to warm up the area. Alright, alright. Wait for the mine. Wait for that mine. Two tiles there. Are you... You're stuck? Ah, oh, come on. Rambo, dude. Cthulhu has had to save you again. <laughs> this guy, man. Oh, God. Every time, dude. It happened again, man. <laughs> he couldn't help it. He got stuck on the ledge again. I actually could mine that like this. So this is a volcano. Right? This is the thing about it. This is kind of a problem because it's a volcano. This is going to be, if I do use it, I'm going to need a lot of space for that. So I'm a little bit reluctant to build around it. Unless it's temporary. Wait, I'm melting? Oh, I had ice over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. We'll mop it up. It's gonna be fine. Gotta let the dupes work, though. So we haven't transitioned into food yet. Although that's what I want. I think we could. I think I could set up a design today. And we could do it somewhat soon. We do need a little bit of ethanol, though. So hopefully we have a little bit of a surplus. This is planted. No, we're waiting for the uh, arbory corn right there still. A little bit of a spillage, that's fine. Just gotta wait for the dupes to catch up. Yeah, that's a little bit of cold thermal energy as well, so it's not too bad. We need rad bolts, let's turn one of these on. It'll burn a little bit off, but I think it'll be fine. The chlorine in CO2 level on this side has dropped dramatic, dude, just so dramatically, dude. It's insane. 
So much have, has already been cleaned off. Can't wait for this to be crushed. So if I were to build an ethanol distillery, I think it should be at the bottom right here. I think we do it that way. So four and just keep mining. We'll take care of this later. I don't want the Sweetles to break out and start eating my sulfur. Not like they're cramped anyways. So we need to start mining there. I got the ladder. I need to mine this. And let me get that set up. And I want to mine this out. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Because I would pull the platform out here anyways. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is... F feels bad. <laughs> this is falling, man. Oh, it's chlorine now. Wait, what? It's flip-flopping too much. So we can't crush gas anymore. It feels bad. There we go. Nice. Sometimes you got to keep it rolling. Could I make it so that it just keeps rolling? Oh, it could. Okay. So let's make it so that it just keeps rolling. Because technically, keeping it rolling is probably what I need right now. I don't want to do an automation on that. Ladder there. Actually, no. That's going to be a solid tile later. We just need to crush all the unbreathable gases to the best of our ability. Sometimes you just got to mine out the map. I'm kind of sad no one's gotten to this mine yet, though. All right, so ethanol distillery, if I do want to do one power plant with the petrol jet, you could see that we have no polluted oxygen in here because we're pressurized, right? 200 kilograms. That's a lot of CO2. Now, we could feed it to the slicksters. I'm not worried. The polluted water might become a problem, though. Maybe we put the pet... I, I mean, we have to put it in a separate room. It's just, do we have it in the same, like, structure as ethanol distillers? We should get more slicksters to put it here, but meh. We need my dupes to mine. Hatch eggs, I'll take that. All right, so we got a little bit of that. Let's continue trimming this. Technically, all this is mineable. And we do want to mine this all out. Alright, alright. Of all the various animals, what is the best for food? Shovel. If you actually can get these guys, they are the best food source, hands down. So basically it comes down to two of these guys will basically be able to feed your individual colonists indefinitely without any input. Meaning that you don't have to feed it anything. You just have to brush it a couple times. And if you have two of them, you have enough food for that duplicate forever. Like, it's never gonna, like, run out. So, all you need is two per duplicate. So, if I have 32 shovels, 
I have infinite food for my colonists. Not only that, the food you get is barbecue, which I haven't actually cooked yet. And barbecue is one of the foods that, if you want, could last you until the end game, and you never have to get anything else. So uh, uh, barbecue is pretty nice. The only thing about it though is that it does spoil, and you might eventually want to go for something like berry sludge, because you don't want the uh, food to rot or anything like that while you're doing a space mission. But shovels are technically the best food source in terms of entire calories. It will, because the new shovel bonds with half the amount of calories that a shovel does. And they actually will not give you an egg before they die. So yes, they actually do mess up your ratio. So not only do they give you less food comparatively, I believe they give you... How much do they give you? They don't give you 16,000 KCALs. That's not true. I think it's like 9,600. If you get, I think you get 9,600 KCALs of meat from a delectable. Not only that, they will not give you an egg unless you feed them. I believe it is at least twice. And if you don't feed them, they don't even give you an egg, which means that you lose a shovel uh, pretty much. So it, it's, it kind of sucks because it does reduce your calories. But now they could degrade the Delecta, right? Yep. Yeah. Or you could do vacuum storage and rocket. Oh yeah, vacuum storage and rocket works too. Yeah, they just die off. Also a pain in the ass to handle. Lol, my dupes keep uh, dropping them mid errand. Oh yeah, dude. That's the thing about shovels. You, you need to make sure you never have to move them. Because when you have to move them, there's a chance of failure. I hate it. I hate it so much that I make designs based off of that. I make it so that... Hey! Oh, I didn't do the auto wrangle surplus here. Uh... One. So that that's part of the thing, like... You see this? I try to make sure that... If I do do a setup where I have to refill the room, I put it deeper in the room. So that there's no chance I drop them off outside. I hate it when the dupes do that. Because, you know, oh, it just happens to be that way, you know? Alright, so we could do this now. Oh, one hydrogen bubble feels bad. Ranching shovels to keep them constant count for now. I see you, I see you. It's a little bit too low. I do need to release hydrogen here. So I do need to get to the hydrogen right there. So that we could keep auto bottling. Alright, this is done. We gotta do more mining. We got to reduce the amount still. Nice. Okay, we're good. We just got to wait for the chlorine to kind of steady out. And now I just got to get the hydrogen pressure to 900 grams. Most cases, they will be at temp. Increase probability of eggs of Delecta. Dude, man, you just got to put them in cold water and you'll be fine. <laughs> delectables, man. The more heat they have, more chance of delectables. All right. So I'm thinking I need to make an evolution chamber in here. And I can make it in here. I'm pretty sure I can. I just need to uh, get my Atmo suits up. I need to get to that point. Balancing out the OP-ness, that's true. That's fair to say. That's fair to say. Shovels are a little bit broken. I don't mind it though. <laughs> Shovels are cool, man. Alright, gotta wait for the dupes to mine. No research focus and I'm fine with that. We could turn that off then. 
And then... How much plastic do I actually have? Dude, I have five tons. Oh, dude, it's time. Oh, I don't have enough oxygen, though. I was going to say, it's time to start telescoping, man. Holy crap. All right, we got to break through the uh, abyssal light then. Make it abyssal light door. We're hatching them in the middle of the base at 25C. 2% delectable chance only, to be frank. Yeah. It's, it's only when it starts to go above 60 that it starts changing the delectable chance. 60% temp, right? Or 60 degrees Celsius. I'm sorry. 60% temp. That's not a thing. <laughs> That's not a thing. 60% uh, 60 degrees. God damn it. Celsius. That's what you need, man. Okay. Still, the seal too, man. It is struggling to fall down. Takes time, man. It takes time. My dupes are struggling to do anything right now. Zero to sixty. Oh, I don't have a shovel to click on. That's why. Ah, oh, feels bad. Guys, is it hot where you guys are at? What are you guys drinking to keep cool? What is the drink of choice today? Is there a beverage that you guys are sipping on? Is it water? Is it tea? Is it coffee? Whatever it may be. Guys, what are you guys drinking today? Iced tea. Hey, me too, dude. I'm drinking iced tea as well. Delicious. Delicious, delicious iced tea. Hey, Highborn Jace. I believe it is, what, 2 a.m. over there right now? Have a great night, man. We'll see you next time. And of course, rest well, rest easy. Ice water. Is it weird, man, that because I don't have an ice machine and my parents are very big on buying a lot of raw meat and fish, they I, I never have ice in my freezer because it smells weird. Makes my drinks taste really weird as well. What's Spindrift, Mighty Stoosh? What is that? I'm actually drinking hot chocolate on a 90-degree uh, day. Jesus Christ. Grid stop, man. God damn. <laughs> You're drinking hot chocolate? Like, chocolate's cool. Don't get me wrong, but damn, dude. It's hot. Hold up, hold up. I had a conversation. Someone, someone actually commented on one of my YouTube videos and said that they like fishing and eating ice cream at the same time. So they go fishing. And then they're eating ice cream. Now, this guy's Alaskan, so it's ice fishing. So the ice cream, like, never melts. So he's like, it's probably weird, but I like doing that. And I was like, wait, the thing with that is, is, that, is that's not really weird. Isn't there people in the world that like to eat ice cream during a winter time? Because it never melts. So they could, uh, you know, slowly consume the ice cream. As long as they would like to. Right? So I, uh, maybe it's like that. Maybe since it's hot, you don't actually, you know. Maybe because it's hot, you don't actually notice that it's hot. So it, it becomes easier to drink. I don't know. Iced tea, TW Fed knows. I'm here in Florida. I just absorbed the water in the air for hydration. And there is so much. <laughs> I see you over there, Mainson. Flavored fruit seltzer. Oh, that's, that's fancy. I see you, Mighty Stoosh feels bad but it makes sense but i do with cold no need for ice just use the fridge yeah, yeah yeah yeah, i don't need it to be ice cold it'd be nice though but yeah feels bad man when you don't have a uh, proper ice machine i don't mind when you have coke or pepsi in your car and it gets hot i kind of like it oh my god dude grid stop man god damn <laughs> grid stop you drink beer dude Who's about to die? Oh my god, it's him again! Rambo, dude! You almost died five times today, man. 
and it's the same dude in the fucking Benedict Cumberman outfit. God damn it, man. Cthulhu, where you at? <laughs> Cthulhu, where you at, man? We gotta save him. Cthulhu's about to pop up from a corner, man. Come on, Cthulhu. We need you, buddy. How are you breathing in seal? Oh, no, there's a little bit of peel, too. That's not bad. Rabble's trying to tell you something. Rabble, you gotta stop. You gotta stop trying to kill yourself, man. I'm tired of saving that guy. Oh, man, Cthulhu is actually tired. He doesn't want to help him anymore. No, look who it is. Look who it is. This guy said I don't want to save him. Look at who it is. Look at this guy. He's saving him. That outfit is sick though. It's gonna look good in that coffin. Yo man. Cthulhu said the same thing. He's wearing that because he wants to die. Death Wish Rambo. 100% man. He saved them man. That's all that matters. I clearly need higher level digging. Is that even something you do dude? Is that something actually that's like your It is your skill set. See, the thing is, is that you don't have enough morale. Actually, you do. All right, man. We're going to give it to him. Rambo, get your digging skill, buddy. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't have done it by yourself. You have to go to the pod to get the skill first. There it is. You got blessed by the pods. And I'm going to take the iron. Dude, yeah, he saved them five times today, man. It's pretty impressive. It's actually pretty impressive. Rambo's, uh, you know, about that life, I guess. He's probably the only other guy with level 3 digging. Yep, yep, that's actually true. <laughs> Oh, man. He's the only other... So the problem with you, though, Rambo, is that your guy can't build. So when you get stuck and you have materials next to you, you can't even build a ladder to save yourself. <laughs> That's the worst part. Like, there is there is a couple of times where if you could have built a ladder, you would have been fine. Like, that uh, that one part just right now. It's just like, we have all the materials right here. It's just a struggle, though. Dude, the seal 2 level does not want to go down. Once we mine this zone, hopefully we could clear this. More floats in. But we need some more gas movement. I never pick those who can't dig or build, but let's be honest, they find a way. That's true. If you don't do it then, it's going to happen on the Neutronium. And when you're on the Neutronium, it's over, man. There's no saving you at that point. <laughs> Once you get stuck on Neutronium, oh man, that's a bad time. Dude, it just takes forever. I think I need to build another Door Crusher over here. I think when it comes down to it, that's what I need to do. Build another Door Crusher. All right. I think we just got to build uh, another door crusher, man. Hello, Mamba. Mamba's napping. You guys want to see the Mamba? He's just sleeping. Not even facing the camera. What's going on, bite me fools? How are you? Uh, death finds a way. <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. My boy Brunson staying put. Is he? Did, did he sign an extension? Did he really sign an extension? Y'all hear about uh, PJ Tucker turning down his contract? There's a lot of memes of people saying he's going to sign with Mavericks, but it's not going to happen. 
you know Pat Riley's getting him back on a better deal. Okay, that's good. That's good. Hey, man, Jalen Brunson's not bad, but technically he's not who you want if you want to win a championship. But you do get Tim Hardaway Jr. back next year and hope that he stays healthy. And if he does, you guys should do better than you guys did last uh, this year. But honestly, man, you guys are like, oh, man. You're, you're hoping he has the same trajectory as Fred Van Fleet. That's actually who you hope he turns out to be. Because Fred Van Fleet, he's, he's undersized. But he, he found a way to be effective. And that's, that's what Jalen Brunson needs to be. He needs to be effective. He needs to be able to take pressure off of Luka. But yeah, man, you guys, I, even with those changes, even with Christian Wood. Oh yeah, congrats on Christian Wood, by the way. Um, it's upgrades, but I don't think it's enough to make you guys like true contenders. I honestly think you guys are missing a couple pieces still. Because you guys did marginal upgrades. It's a clear upgrade, but it's not like the guy that you got that's better is like a superstar or anything like that. Alright, so we are going to get rid of this gas pump for now, because we do have a little bit of, you know, CO2 stockpile. And we'll just get rid of that. We're going to do a larger door crusher, a little bit closer to the bottom. Yeah, you guys did trade a lot of expiring contracts, which is not bad. And, they, and Houston wants players that won't take up minutes that's what they want because they don't want to develop their young core you know who you guys probably might be trying to get that would be pretty good you guys should try to get buddy healed from the pacers man <laughs> you you guys you guys do oh you guys don't want Kyrie, dude come on come on you guys you, you would you really want Kyrie? i don't want Kyrie on my lakers I don't want Kyrie on my Lakers, man. Miles Turner isn't moving, so, you know, you can't get him. They need another big. So you guys still have Maxi, and then you have Christian Wood, and then you have backup Dwight Powell. It's not like you guys don't have big men. You guys do. They're just not that good. Seventh man, maybe eighth, uh, eighth man, then get me a point. I think that if you guys do do small ball, I feel like with the market that you have right now, there's not a lot of people. PJ Tucker would be a great fit, but he's not going to sign. He's going back to Miami. And then, who else is a free agent? There's no one else that's really a free agent right now, right? Holy Seal 2, yes, I have a lot. I'm trying to delete it right now with some doors. I'm pumping it into some Slicksters. I'm pumping it into storage up top. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, man, we're trying to get rid of it as much as we can. Should make infinite CO2 storage. I don't need it though. Because I'm going to be using ethanol distilleries. So I'm always going to have a lot. Right? I'm never going to run out. I'm using ethanol and I'm using petroleum gens. You see the, you see the CO2 pressure in here? 220 kilograms per tile. There is 102 tiles. <laughs> There's a lot of CO2 in this room, man. I'm going to try to delete it as much as we can. And because I know we're going to be constantly producing it, I, I don't need to store it. I, I think I'll be fine. But I need to get rid of it, though, so that we could generate more oxygen, more breathability, because we don't have suits yet. 
I guess I do want to do this though. And then I need to get the ladder down. On the real, they can't be good for those dupes. They may be alive, but their lungs are the size of peaches. Hey man, this is this is what we call uh, conditioning. When you spend time underwater and you can't breathe, it's not that your lungs get weaker, they get stronger, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's a trait in this game called deep diver's lungs, where if you hold your breath a lot, you consume less oxygen. <laughs> I hate I hate to use that man, but hey, it's kinda true. Kinda true. Keep telling yourself that. Nah man, it's in-game mechanics. Real life though, I, I wouldn't say it's 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 the way I'm describing it. I'm just saying that's in-game mechanics, man. Do I have a dupe with that trait actually? So I could I could prove it. <laughs> so bio. Small bladder. Yodeler. Crier. Green thumb. Banshee buff. Small bladder duplicates. Ancient knowledge. No one has deep diver's lungs, man. Oh, there it is. Diver's lungs. Reduce oxygen consumption rate. Actually a game mechanic. <laughs> Actually a game mechanic, surprisingly. Wall of ethanol distillers to contain the CO2. They generate too much for the door compressors. I am. I am. I'm actually... Curl uh, Clearing out the space exactly for that reason. Bite me? <laughs> That's exactly the reason why I'm starting to mine it out. I need to find a spot to move my ethanol distillers. And I'm going to move it to the bottom right here. So I'm trying to mine out some space first. And uh, try to take care of it. Why not just pump those carbon skimmers? Uh, this is more effective and is powerless. So carbon skimmers clean at a rate of 30 grams per second. I am clearing, this is around, let's say, 3,500, right? And that's every 14 seconds. So it's actually about the same rate now that I look at the math, but this is powerless. So it's it's about the same thing. If I were to build a carbon skimmer or just keep using this design. Is that compressing enough? I'm not compressing. I'm deleting. It deletes 3,500. It's a little bit more every 14 seconds. That's what I mean. It's not. If that's It's not going to keep up with the ethanol distiller. So what we're trying to do is moving this into its own separate room. Oh, you make a longer one like that? <laughs> I feel you, man. I feel you. I need to uh, move the ethanol distillers first. No, I, I go 14 seconds because of my timer. 7 red, 7 green. So I think it's 14. Alright, so the ethanol does not have to be in the same room how long is this 12. oh it's because i'm on 3x speed my my simulation speeds a lot faster so if it's here oh that's that's pretty good yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm on uh the fast forward life man gotta go fast gotta go fast all right, so I do need this. And then it's another liquid lock set. Oh, no. Wait, hold up. So if I do that, that's 12. I need an extension, so it's like this. Ah, yes. 
There we go. And then we have the ladders here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I need. I do need to mine up the sand, though. So I'll do that now. And we got a new printable. Hatchling. This hatchling in chat. We just drafted you, buddy. Not the duplicate version, though. Could you just extend the top floor? Uh, this one? And use the same liquid lock? I don't want the heat to leak out because I don't have gold. You could see that it's above 75. And the ethanol distillers will start overheating above 75. Oh, they don't? This doesn't have an overheat? Oh, shit. I might actually be able to do that. I thought this overheats. This doesn't overheat? I thought this was a normal building. It's not. Today I learned. This does not overheat. So I'm actually able to... Yeah. I'm actually able to pull it off of this room. And then technically... I could just utilize the uh, ladder way. Sounds like an oversight. Who knows, man? This doesn't overheat. What I mean is like uh, the buildings right here. Overheat temp, 75. That's what I thought. So I have a cool salt slush that I want to turn into a renewable water source. How would I warm it up to specific temp before turning into regular water? Ah, so it. Um, You're going to look for either A, uh, spot cooling method. That's what I'm doing right now. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Or B, you're going to want to look for a hot geyser source. So first thing is cooling loops. What I'm doing is I'm pumping up the cold water and then I'm running a radiant pipe on select tiles and running it in a loop. And then it cools down. You can see how effective it is. Outside of the loop right here, immediately it gets hot because of the CO2 not being very conductive. But you can see that I'm cooling my rusty oxidizer very quickly. Now, cooling loop, I basically have a pipeline loop and all of them is the same, so I'll show you this one. Actually, no. Uh, this one is probably the best. It's basically a loop with pipelines, radiant pipings on certain spots, and then you run a bridge so that the liquids run without power, and then you bridge onto the line so that when the water leaves, you could add more water in. You have a liquid sensor controlling when you want the liquid to go out, so you could do it as low as above zero, or I cool it until the water is at 24 degrees in which the uh, salt water leaves. So I could do it as low as 15. What happens is that the water leaves and then I add more water in once the empty bubble comes around. So it's like that. And then I add more cold water in. So by doing that, the water that leaves goes into a desalinator. I also have a little bit of polluted water here. So I have a sieve as well. And then that feeds into my metal refinery. So depending on where you want to use it, your liquid reservoirs right here will feed out into something else. But the cooling loop idea allows you to basically utilize your cold water at minus 10 to cool down your map. That's how I'm actually cooling down and controlling temperature in the early game. You could see that I have one here. I have one here. I have one here. I have one here. And I have one here. And I have one here. I also have one here, but that's connected to an aqua tuner. So the powerless uh, cooling loop is a good option. However, you're not going to get the water as fast as you would like to. You can see that my liquid reservoirs right here are always empty because I'm consuming the waters as soon as I get it. Now, that being said, you could use the same thing on a hot water source. So if you have a cool steam vent, this is a great thing to cool down because it's steam. This way, when you run the water and you would probably want to do something like this bop this make that radiant pipe and then have a temperature check outside of the box so something like this and then you would automate it and then the pipeline would connect at the bottom again this comes out goes into a reservoir right and then uh you would have a pump in here as well a liquid pump so you could pump out the water as soon as it comes out as uh, water. Now, because this is always going to be close to 100 degrees and you're always going to be at minus 10, you only need to run over one tile, right? 
and then you could very easily warm it up to a decent temperature and then have it sieve right away in the desalinator or uh, filter. So you have your options on how you want to do that. And uh, yeah, you could choose. Uh, if you don't want to do what I just explained, you could always dump it into a cold water tank like this and let it naturally warm up. So if you have a hot environment, you're trying to cool down, you could just dump the water in an open tank like this, and it's going to start chilling out the environment. And then it's going to go above zero. And then you can just pump it from here after it warms it up. That's the probably new player friendly one, because you don't have to do anything special in terms of design. You don't have to have a design that works. It's more so that, you know, it's a concept, dump the water, warms up because the ambient temperature is hotter than zero. And then bam. You get warm water. It's still pretty cold at 6 degrees. Thought options. Happy to help, man. Tepidizer. I don't like the Tepidizer because it uses power. Even though I'm using a Tepidizer right here. <laughs> Freaking Tepidizers, man. Use it to cool something else like power gens or electrolyzers. Yep. I'm doing the electrolyzer cooling. I'm doing the petroleum gen cooling. It's pretty nice. All right. We got to wait for that. I don't know if I want to use this room, to be honest, so that I share the liquid lock. It's a great idea, but I think I'm not going to do that because in the initial thought process, I wasn't thinking about using that. And another thing is, is that I'm actually not going to keep this long term. This is only a temporary spot to get a little bit of oil because I want to have a different uh, liquid element for making some of the things that I want to make. I have mostly cool area at the moment, so I'm thinking about using my power gen to help cool that a bit. Yeah, that could work if you find a hot geyser source too. If you don't have a cool steam vent, another good one is the hot water vents, if you have that. So like the hot salt slush, I mean the hot salt water, hot regular water. Uh, you could also do things like uh, if you have a hydrogen vent, right? You could have the water run over the hydrogen so that you can cool down the hydrogen and then you'll be able to pump it. Because the hydrogen vent spawns at 500 degrees, right? And you can't pump that because that breaks your uh, gas vent. So you could run the water over that first. So usually if you have a geyser, that's going to be a good option because it's powerless. You know, it's going to create something at a fixed temperature. It's always going to be there. So it's going to be pretty good. But if you don't have the geyser options, yeah. Uh, another good thing would be critters. And that's because if you didn't know, when a critter hatches from an egg, they spawn with a fixed temperature. So Dracos will always spawn at 65 degrees the moment they're born. And then if your area is warmer or hotter, it's going to either increase or decrease. Oh, I put too much hydrogen. No, it's too much hydrogen. I can't believe this. I'm okay with that. I got to release more chlorine now. <laughs> if it's too much hydrogen, I could do that. So that means this is going to be back to hydrogen. So I want the chlorine to be at least this level. And I'm not going to be pumping anymore. That's chlorine. And we'll do it like that. I need to wait for the chlorine to balance out. Because I need the chlorine for the bomb lilies to grow. And then I want to make it so that once I have the hydrogen at a pressurized amount, that the chlorine doesn't spill into this room and go to the here. Because that kind of bops me. So I need the hydrogen to be okay, but I need the values to be similar so that it doesn't fluctuate. So I need to fill the bottom room with a little bit more hydrogen, which is fine. All right, so we got to here. I need to do that. I need to sweep that. I need to mine that. And I do want to make some suits. We'll actually do that right now. So stations, exosuit, forge. All right, all right. No coolant, add a lime, that's fine. Right now, most of my farms are cooled by my badly executed spawn cooling combo. I uh, removed the refinery and resolved the problem I was having with it. Nice. 
that's good, man. Happy to uh, hear that you're solving and making progress. That's always a good sign. But hey, you were, you know, able to recognize that the metal refiner was not really helping you out in that moment in time. So good stuff, man. I need to release more CO2 into here so we can start crushing more. You all see this, man? Why can't it just spill to the right? That'd be so amazing, man. Just spill to the right. And we just keep crushing it. So we would have that have that and i do want to mine that out oh i need to wrangle these guys off the bed have a good night take care more decks rest will rest easy thank you for hanging out and of course hope you have a good one i don't know if you mentioned it yet but yo man hope your back is feeling better dude this guy mordax over the weekend he uh, participated in uh, how do i call this Viewer WWE. And he got caught by a powerbomb. Right on his back. Laid his ass out. And he got powerbombed by the only Steve Nash. No, I mean Steve Nash. Kevin Nash. And boy did his ass get beat. Can't mess with the wrestlers, man. All right, all right. I just hope I don't crush oxygen. That's all I really care about. As long as I don't crush the oxygen, we're fine. Hey, it's good to hear that the back's doing good, dude. Good to hear, good to hear. Oh, and we're maxed out on ethanol. That's not a good sign. So we're going to create more rad bolts so that I produce more polluted dirt. That's actually the upside by keeping the ethanol distilleries on. I need to have them running. Okay, so suit forge, we have a lot of copper. I need to wanna I wanna make 16 suits at the very minimum. So we have one for every dupe. And then I could start setting up some oxygen for it. Okay. So if the rusty oxidizer just kept rolling, we would be fine. So I need to reduce. O2. Okay. I should be able to mine all that out, right? I could technically open this and have the oxygen bubble just kind of spread around. Yep, so my dupe's main living area is a nice cool 22 average, even with the critter farms I have. Nice, 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 nice. That's a nice tempered temperature. That's actually ideal. If you didn't know, if you bring up the thermal heat map, the temperate areas is actually where your dupes will actually gravitate towards if you don't give them a bed. If you don't have beds for your dupes, they're going to look for a green area and sleep there. That's actually the preferred temperature by the duplicates. A lot of people don't know that though, because a lot of people build beds and they have to sleep in the beds. I did what's called a uh, narcolepsy run where I made every dupe have narcoleptic trait, so they sleep randomly. So that means they actually don't need beds. So I would randomly just have my dupes running around and sleeping in the green spots. And the funny thing was, was that if there was only one green spot, all of my dupes would be sleeping there. It's, it was so hilarious. It, it felt like they all decided to sleep in the same area. It was pretty cool. You could have made those spacefarer rooms into nature reserves. Yeah, but they would never go inside. Feels bad, man. <laughs> they would never go inside, though, man. Would that have been worth it? They never would have gone inside. What do you mean? Wait, wait, so when they run through and open the door, they don't go inside, right? They stay outside, because when a rover does it, it does the same thing. A rover never goes inside the space for a module, but if they walk across the top of this, it does the open-closed door animation.
So I don't think they actually get the benefit. Oh, you're saying... Oh, I see what you're saying. Make this room into a nature reserve. I thought you meant make a nature reserve in here and have that right before the suits so that as they walk by they get the nature reserve buff <laughs> that's what i thought like you had you had the room right here and my docks right here and then they were like oh yeah when they pass through they go inside they get the nature reserve buff and they come back out <laughs> that's what i thought that's what i thought that was the train of thought i was out i was like wait that doesn't work like that hold up i see what you're saying yeah i could i actually could do that I would have to push this out of tile. Oh, could... If this was a natural tile here, would a pit be able to plant on it? If this was a natural tile, can a pit plant on it? That's actually a good question. Because I would rather have something like that. Because I would have to have the doors here. Which means I can't get a plant here. And then even if I move it out, I don't get the park sign. I could just go for a regular park. Four wild plants. Two floor too big. It needs to be wider. How's the suburb? We're we're thinking about making some changes, Slayer. <laughs> we're thinking about making some changes right now. But uh we'll have to see. We're we're starting to get plastic though, so it's starting to be like we might get it soon. But as of right now, we have not gone in to fix it yet. I'm a little bit worried about my O2 situation and my seal 2 situation that we have right now. A little bit worried, a little bit worried. Hole in the floor for two nature reserve. How much tiles is this? I see what you're saying. But the nature reserve is max 120 tiles, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's too large, too large. I see what you're saying though, Mighty Stooch. Player, how you doing though? How was the days? How is the Tuesdays? Hope you're doing good, dude. Hmm. So I might have to extend it out slightly because we do have space, so I might as well, right? If we have space to extend it out so that I can make each room a nature reserve, I'd probably do it. Right? Extend it out, maybe two more tiles. So that I get another tile. Could fill unnecessary tiles to reduce the size closer to 120? Hmm. So we would have basically this. This is 68 tiles. These would be doors. These would be doors. These would probably be doors. Or door up top, door bottom, and then this is open. So this would still be 68 plus 68. And then I would have to add tiles here, tiles here, tiles here, tiles here. I would still be short 8 tiles. Yeah, I would have to rebuild everything. Unfortunately. <laughs> I would have to relocate my space for a module. That'd be such pain. We'll see though, we'll see. We'll see what the verdict's gonna be. Because I still need to get my suits up. I still need to make more copper. I still need to burn off a little bit more ethanol. And then I need to build my new distilleries here. I'll make this out of iron because we have a lot. Shipping here? 
And then I need to have a shoot. For the lumber. Make the suit room a reserve is probably easier. Yeah, honestly, that's probably the probably a lot easier that way. Making the suit room the nature reserve. Alright, so all of the ethanol distillery is going to be here now. I am not going to remove this one yet. I do need a little bit of oil to make the lock. Oh, auto save lag. Alright, so we have this oil. And then we'll get some oil here. That PO2 bubble, man, so random. But my idea would be perfect for the four park achievement. That's true. I see you over there, man. Got our vacuum. Good stuff. All right. Sweepers there. To bring the lumber to here and then we need to sweep out the polluted dirt i believe i mean it's never gonna you know have issues because we have a lot of co2 anyways i guess i could release a little bit more co2 into here Alright, alright, we'll have those. The power line, though, I should try to change. Ho-ho! 1,200. Okay, I could, might be able to pull it off of this line instead. So, 1, 2, 3, that's 720. That means 1920, and I have 80 watts. And then it's going to be my auto sweeper. That I could probably put on the regular wire still. And temporarily, that wouldn't be too bad. I'd save that, have it here. It's the same power source, though. It just means that I could use the wire for other things. That's not bad of an idea. Alright, so... Power, conductive... I gotta wait for the copper to be smelted. Feels bad. Alright, so I will turn this on. So that we burn through more of the power. We cannot do water research. Okay, so we'll just get that here. And then this is brine water. Okay, so I should be desalinating this. Because my mule was dying. Okay, so the refinement desalinator feels bad, man. But I guess we have to uh, have it somewhere here. I gotta deconstruct this. But at least we have a little bit of 24 degree brine water we could use for locks now. And then we would move this over to the left. That goes like that. That goes like that. And then I guess we have the water be down here. And then we get power, just like that. Cool, cool. All right, we're starting to crush oxygen. So let me put this back on the right automation set. So I need to delete that. This goes into here, and then this goes into here. And we're detecting CO2 before we do the crushing again. Looks like we still detect it. Not bad. Oh, oxygen again. It feels like it never wants to go down. It just moves up constantly. Even though I'm trying to, to freaking move more. Oh, God. Alright. So, let's move a little bit more gas into here. 
What's that achievement? Uh, build four nature reserves. That's the achievement. I don't know the name of it, though. I forget the name that it's actually uh, tied to. But that's the achievement. Build four nature reserves. Right, pipe blocks marked for emptying pipe blocks. Yeah, that's fine. I they added a bunch recently, right? I guess they would uh, add more. Maybe they would probably add more on the next paid DLC because we only got more achievements on the paid DLC, right? When the automation achievement came out, I don't think anything changed achievement wise. That's what I'm thinking. Never know, though, right? We never know. All right, the next thing we're going to grab is conveyor sensors. Some reservations. Thank you, X-Cage. Or is it X-Kage? Yeah, we're missing that research, which is fine. All right, once we have this into here and we start dealing with oxygen, we're finally going to make a change. <laughs> I can't wait, dude. Can't wait to get some of this done. Oh man, mixed tanks. There's a lot I like. I feel like I did on my last spaced out run, but maybe some sync failed. Oh, uh, maybe it was pre-DLC? Because I think the DLCs reset when the full release came out. Do you have any Oxfords planet? There was. I, I dug them out. There's one right here. I dug out a couple that were right here. I don't think we have any pips planning anymore though. So I don't think I have any more outside of this one. Change? We're gonna make a change for once in my life? Yo, man. Are they calling? I see you over there. Is that a meme? How come I feel like I don't understand this reference? Like, my name is Captain America. Totally over my head. I did not understand that reference. It's a Michael Jackson. Is that, is that the same Michael Jackson that did the hee hee hee? You know what I'm talking about? Is it that guy? 900. Still not enough. We're still trying to do more hydrogen, but no one's emptying it out right now. Man in the mirror, he did a lot of uh, hee hees in that one. <laughs> Dude, someone should find an anime where one of the characters laugh and the subtitles go hee hee and just replace it with the Michael Jackson every time they laugh. <laughs> I don't know, would that be entertaining? Would it be kind of scary, dude? Wait, how this sweet will get over there? He's in the water. He's not going to give us an egg. And there's no egg here. How did he get here? That's kind of weird. Maybe he was buried. I need my rusty oxidizer to turn on a little bit more. And while we're waiting for that to happen... This is pressurized. Okay, cool. So we can let this keep pumping. I... I think we're going to do a larger door crusher at the bottom. I don't know if I should, though, because it's like higher gas pressure over here. So we might want to do it over here instead. Maybe that's the play. That's going to be kind of tough to build, though. Because if it's do a deep tunnel, I'd rather do something like that, a little bit wider. I just don't have a lot of air flowing into this pocket. All right, so we could just get this started, though. So, ethanol piping probably is going to go right here. I haven't looked at this game in a hot minute. What's the slinky worm? The green guy. Ah, so that's a uh, new critter. 
So when the DLC came out, they introduced a new species of critters, and that's both of these guys. You get the beetle. If the beetle tends a certain plant, they evolve into the green guy. So the green guy and the beetle was the same thing. They do effectively the same thing. It's just that the green one is the evolved form and is a little bit more effective. Um, in terms of diet, though, it's a little bit different. This guy gives you mud, and this guy gives you sugar. So they both eat sulfur. This guy actually eats sugar and sulfur, and he gives you mud. So depending on what you need, you could feed them the specific resources. But this plant right here, the spinally grubfruit plant, if it's tended by a Sweetle, it evolves into a proper grubfruit plant. There is a spinally one and there is a proper grubfruit one. So the grubfruit is the, I guess, the full form. So they evolve each other. Now, these guys also give you a benefit that's similar to a fertilizer buff. If you actually click on the plant, there's something called a grub grub rub. And the green critter in and of itself is called a grub grub. So when they rub a plant, there's actually a bonus to growth speed for that specific plant. So they're very beneficial to have roaming around on your farms because they basically just speed up growth time for you. So you could either be a sugar or mud. Yes, sugar ant or mud ant. Of course, mud's pretty good because that's both dirt and water and you could just spin that and filter it out with the... Uh, what is that? Basics? No. Stations? Refinement, I'm sorry. Right here, sludge press. It's basically a salad spinner, separates the water from the solids. So you would be able to get your resources from that. Sugar you could use to cook, you know. There's uh, some of the items work as preserves that are pretty well. So it really depends on which resource you want, to be honest. Uh, there's also a benefit because sugar can be used for rocket fuel. Because when you burn it, it becomes CO2. And that technically can be compressed for compulsion. So that's technically a, a resource that they have as well. Or not resource, a function. But yeah, that's the green guy. He's pretty good, not gonna lie. He's actually the favorite change I have for the update. Because the update added a lot of things to the game, and it's all awesome. But this guy in particular, dude, he is probably my favorite critter. Look at how large he is. And the best part is when he moves up and down, they kind of just face plant everywhere. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Alright, alright. So, we're building the pipeline out. We're going to also need the conductive wire, which we're missing some liquid from. Okay, so I'm going to take the second five tons of water. And we're going to do that. I am going to let that accumulate while we steal the water from this tank. That water comes from my ethanol distillery, so I'm not worried about that. We just need more water for all the things. I actually... Hmm. Do I want to keep running this? I guess it is oxygen. It's getting above... Oh, we're going to get popped eardrum soon. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> I'm going to get popped eardrum soon. It's 2,500 uh, grams right now. Hopefully that's not too much stress for my guys. Alright, if we could reroute the ethanol today, we did a good job. So we're going to try to do that right now. Uh, 35. It's 35, I believe. But 4k guaranteed, yeah, you're going to get pop your drums. I think it's 35. You might be right with 4k. I want to say it's 3500, though. Oh my god, I'm creating a vacuum. Wait a second, oxygen? Get that out of here. Please, no oxygen in this room. 1k per tile is a long way. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess, I guess. Do you see this? 200 grams? I wish the CO2 just kind of pushed itself down a little bit faster, man. I really wish the speed of which that was happening was a little bit better. Because they are slow, man. My god. 
All right, I'm actually going to probably extend my door crusher right here the moment my ethanol is done. So let's actually get that set up. So I would want to do a dug-in tile set. We'll probably do the same size and do it like that. All right, all right. Got to crush the seal too, best way we can. All right, so if this is like that, here, 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 and then yes. And then technically we know how the automation works. So the bottom, oh, I don't have refined metals. Dude, every time. Oh, uh, this is done though. Let's go. Give me all my water. Give me all the water, fam. I need it for smelting right now. There's also the CO2 here. Dude, my Slickster is not consuming enough, man. My god. 20 kilograms and it's it's barely consuming. Oh no, he's doing redstone. We're like five minutes away from a working calculator. Nice. You know, I could do that, but due to how some of the lag works in this game, it, it's not worth it, man. I can make a calculator though, it's not too hard. Now I can't do uh, big equations. That might be the only downside. <laughs> I can't do the big equations. Oh, am I, am I running out of meal ice? Feels bad, man. So we're at a thousand. This is at a thousand. All right, I think this is okay. What the heck is going on? Hey, have some lemur coming in with the raid. Lemur's corner raid hype. I see you guys over there. Uh, little Annabelle, what's going on? BT Mikey, have some lemur himself. What's going on? Have some. Renata seventeen, Asian vixen, Jalid girl, Gel ID girl, Gel ID. I will. We'll go with that. Uh, Hyper Lofus, Dragon F17, Pancake Eki, Huffle Proud. Welcome on in, you guys. Thank you so much for the raid. Have some lemur. Were you playing? What the heck is going on? Have some lemur, dude. You just raided me. And you're coming in with five gifted. Jesus Christ. Were you playing? Played up, dude. Hey, he was. Thank you so much for the five gifted. Holy crap. You come in with a raid. Come in with the five gifted. Thank you so much. BS Flames. Welcome on in. And of course, have some Lieber man. Thank you so much for the support. And of course, thank you so much for the five gifted freight. Warrior. No, Warwick Six. Bite Me Fools. MV Hank. Pothole Saturn. Guys, you guys know what it is. You guys know who to thank. And of course, welcome to the city. Enjoy the emote. D20 does ad free viewing. Don't forget that legit sub badge. You see that kitty cat in the bottom left hand corner? That's my cat Mamba and he is out cold sleeping. He got his paws up because he doesn't know what to do with his hands. And check out those beans. Y'all know what it is, but thank you so much. Have some Lieber. Thank you so much for the support. Playing some played up, man. You lied to me. Never played played up, huh? If you guys don't know, have some Lieber. The guy's awesome and he does a lot of played up. Check the man out. Yo, little Annabelle, thank you so much for the 50 bits. That is, of course, the kitty cat behind me in the uh, window right here. That's him meowing on a clip. <laughs> but thank you so much for the 50 bits. Appreciate it. But of course, guys, if you guys are just coming in, my name is Too Legit City. We're playing some Oxygen Not Included, which is a colony management game. If you guys have any questions about this, feel free to ask. It's basically if you guys played a game like RimWorld, it's RimWorld, but instead of a uh, top-down, this is a 2D side-scroller in terms of how the camera angle is. And uh, it's a colony management game, except there is very little combat. So it is uh, more of a peaceful version. And of course, when you have no combat, you have to add something else in. And of course, we're dealing with science. We're trying to generate oxygen. We're trying to make sure the CO2 does not overtake the breathable areas as CO2 is not breathable. However, oxygen is. So we need to balance out. And because I'm doing some things like generating fuel, 
burning off the fuel. I'm generating a lot of CO2 from burning everything. So we're trying to be uh, balanced out in a situation and we're trying to deal with the CO2 right now. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I would be happy to help. And thank you so much for the raid. Have some lemur. How was the streams today, man? How was the plate up? Hate to raid a run, mate, but I gotta get going. Might have been last stream before the baby, so I gotta get busy. Oh, shit. Make sure to follow legit. Might be a plain plate up soon. Night, man. All the love. Gotcha, gotcha, man. You gotta baby-proof the house. I know how it is, man. I had to do that for my nieces and nephews a couple years ago. But hey, dude. Gotta do what you gotta do. Thank you so much for the raid. And of course, no worries, man. Appreciate the support, and thank you for raiding me today, man. Thank you so much. Have some lemur. And if you guys don't know, have some lemur. He's, he's, he's a dad. <laughs> so the man's going to be busy. But you guys know what to do. Share some love. Check the man out. And of course, he's going to be playing some plate up, I believe. But yeah, thank you so much. Have some lemur. I'll take care of your folks as best as I can. Those space apartments. Yeah, man. We might have to move them, though, because Cthulhu gave us an idea. And I was like, hey, maybe maybe that could be something we could do. Love me some kitty toe beans. You know, you know what, guys? I'll show you guys the whole camera. <laughs> that's actually how Mamba looks like right now. That's his feet. And he's sleeping like I do as a human because he watches me sleep sometimes and he sees that I lay on my back. So he tries to copy me and sleep like I do. So you can see that he has his feet up. <laughs> he's, he's a cute little kitty cat, man. He really is. He got the toe beans, man. Double toe beans. And I think he's out cold right now. Look at him. Doesn't even know. He's just sleeping on the beds. <laughs> but that's the Mamba. He's the mascot behind my emotes. If you guys ever hear a meow or uh, something going on. It's probably the little baby Mambas. We gotta catch one of his legs. Nice. It's adorable. Am I getting an energy drink at 11 p.m.? Yes, yes, I am. Dude, make sure it's sugar-free, man. Gotta make sure it's sugar-free. And I'm not, I'm not sure, but does anyone else in the chat have this problem? I can't drink energy drinks. I get too jittery, and I, I just can't handle it. I don't know if it's a combination of the sugar and the caffeine and the dosage and the high amounts, but man, dude, if I ever have a rock star or a monster, dude, it tears me up. I feel like I'm awake, but at the same time, I feel like I'm cracked out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too much for me, man. It's too much power. I got to stick to my iced tea and coffee, man. Oh, I have ADHD as well. Hey, fellow ADHD guy. Hey, man. I've had it all my life. Diagnosed as a kid. And never took any medication for it. Kind of just, you know, parents are like, medication is potentially bad. All right, let's not do medication. And the doctor's like, yeah, that's cool. He just, he just has to live with it. And the funny thing was, they told me one time at the doctor, and no one in my family ever mentioned it before again. Maybe they're just thinking that if I don't know I have it, they, they you know, <laughs> it'd be like that sometimes. Oh, what? Made a mess? <gasps> Toilets. Oh, no. I took out the water tank. Oh, shit. So everyone's peeing their pants right now. Oh, my God. Look at that waterfall. This guy's Slayer, dude. That's a lot of water, dude. Holy crap. All right, where's it gonna splash into? Can we get some moppers in chat? Oh, that's gross. Look at the viscosity of that thing. Also, Nightbot calling me out. Right after say I gotta get an energy drink. Hey man, stay hydrated. <laughs> gotta stay hydrated. I had a Red Bull on the 18th. Thought I was gonna die. Oh yeah. Was that was that your first Red Bull? Your heart was just pumping out of your chest. I had that happen to me before. The first time I had a mixed drink, it was a mixed drink if you guys, oh, part two, electric boogaloo, a second pee the pants. 
Ah, oh, man. You hate to see this kind of thing happen. Splash. You really do. When the people pee the pants, it's a bad time. I need someone to do this today. Slayer, you peed your pants. Can you actually get me today? He's getting the materials. Nice. I never got diagnosed by my pharmacy nurse and was like, no, you didn't hear from us. But you have it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Dude, that was gross. I can't believe he peed on the floor like that. Right in front of the raid. Come on, man. That was the first time someone peed their pants today. And they had to do it when I'm getting raided. Feels bad, man. But yo, man, one time, I was... I never had a mixed drink before, because, you know, as a guy in college, a lot of my roommates and some of my fraternity friends would tell me, hey, uh, if you get a mixed drink that's sweet, you, you, you know, you shouldn't do it. Just get a beer. I was like, why? He's like, oh, on only women do that. And I was like, oh, okay. So I didn't want to look like a chump in front of him. And I was like, only women get that. Whatever. I, I didn't really believe it. So I was like, I've seen people, you know, get mixed drinks. And, you know, they're not all women. But, you know, they made that statement. I was like, huh. Feels weird, man. Oh, someone else just peed again. Geek. I'm sorry. So, uh, at some point... I was like, I'm going to get a mixed drink. I got to try it. And at this point, I'm not a heavy drinker. I've never been. But, uh, you know, had to try it out for the first time. Dude, it tore me up. I was like, the alcohol was there. And then I drank the sugar too. And my heart, I felt like I was going to die. My heart couldn't stop be uh, beating. It was just pumping and pumping and pumping. And I just sat still. Like, oh my god, I, I, I feel like I'm about to die. Like, what's going on? What the hell is this? And, and then the sugar wore off, and I was fine again. Like, after my heart stopped beating from the sugar rush, oh my god, that was a bad couple minutes. Because, man, oh man, that was a bad mix. And then from this day on, I, I try not to drink sugary alcoholic drinks. Tears me up. Yeah, my friends went through a list of symptoms without telling me what they were. And I was like, yeah, I have all of those. <laughs> Holy crap. Holy crap. That's tough, man. How old were you when you found out? Has it changed your life in any way, shape, or form? Do you do things different now? Or is it still all the same? Okay, so we made enough suits. That's not bad. I do want to get some more, though. But I don't have enough refined metal for that. I am making some more, but it's going to take some time. <laughs> you found out You found out last year. Oh, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's like at that point, though, COVID was already happening. It's not that much worse. It's, it's not worse than COVID. So it's like, oh, okay, at least I don't have COVID. <laughs> you know, as long as you think about it that way. Oh, crap. Okay, this is going to be aluminum gas because I'm crushing oxygen at this point. So I need to wait for the gases to steady out before I start crushing again. Oh, it's all the same. I've been living this for so long. It's just my normal. Hey, that's fine. If it is your normal and you're okay with it, that's awesome, dude. Looks like we had more people pee their pants. Feels bad. But hey, if you're living like that already and you're used to it and it hasn't really changed, hey man, that's not that bad though. It's not that bad at all. Alright, so we gotta get our setup over here. First things first, we gotta get this setup. And then I gotta wait for the wire. Yo man, are you are you you have bad posture, man? <laughs> you have bad posture or something, man? Nightbot, Nightbot's trying to do the Nightbot job, dude. Alright, so this is at 1100, this is at 15. I want to say I have enough chlorine. Alright, so I'm going to deconstruct... Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. Oh, the, the Drekos are going to break out. Oh, damn. I didn't think about that. The Dracos are going to break out. Okay, I got to wait then. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Nutrient bars. I'll grab that. 
I do have bad posture too, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> oh man, it's hot though. Stay hydrated, guys. Even if it's a monster. <sighs> alright, alright. So the door crushing is still steadying out a little bit. That's not too bad. Some of the water came down, which is okay. This is starting to pressurize again, so I could reconnect the power. So the chlor uh, the CO2 should be coming down. Now we're waiting to get the insulated pipeline still. Once that's done, we could remove that from here. And oh yeah, that's an always burning. That's kind of good. Do I need rad bolts? No. So let me turn one of these off. And then I'm waiting for the door crusher to continue. And then... What are we missing here? I guess a power line. Something like that. And then the conductive power. Oh, that's right, I never built this. That is correct. Hopefully only three to four hours of work. Hey, man. You at work right now? Don't get fired, man. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. You at work, man? Don't get fired. Do what you gotta do. But hey, only three to four more hours, man? Damn, you must be West Coast or something. Or maybe you have night shift. Because, man, it's kind of late. Oh, I see you, I see you. All good, man, all good. Nope, just being overworked. Oh, that sucks, man. That's the worst. I hope you're not in accounting, because I used to be like that. I used to get overworked all the time. <laughs> and it wasn't even my fault, it's just that everything is late. And then I do my job on time, it's like, well... You gotta stay. Ah, right, what the fuck? Come on, man. That's not right. 12.5 hours yesterday. Slept 6. Now I'm at 12 hours again. It's still going. Damn, dude. At least you're young. Engineer. Ah. What kind of engineering are you doing? If you don't mind me asking. Are you doing industrial engineering? Are you making things? Are you doing, uh... Architectural design? Are you doing computer engineering? So you're, like, typing code and stuff? Computer science? Are you trying to create an algorithm that outdoes the Google search engine? That would be kind of wild. I know that feeling, uh, Mikey. It feels bad. I don't mind. Acoustics engineer for an R&D film. Oh my god. I have no idea how any of that works do you use a program to help you out with that or is it a lot of design test design and test because acoustic sounds very specialized to the point where it's like i don't even know if you go to school for that <laughs> like holy crap dude that sounds crazy Robotics engineer? Yo, man, I wanted to get into robotics engineering as a kid. Because of the, uh, y'all remember on the, uh, TV show back in the day? BattleBots? They would have, like, engineers come in, make a robot, and they would have to fight each other in the cage. Y'all remember that? I used to watch that as a kid, man. And I wanted to become a, uh, engineer because I wanted to do something like that. You could go to school for it, and man, they did not have that major at my college. I'll say that much. That was not something that was available for us. Dude, you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, have you ever done something like that? Have you been on the show? Oh, man, because that thing, man, it, it seems insane. Like, you got guys coming in with a flamethrower. It, it's pretty wild, man. Lots of designing and testing. It's been crazy, but it's been here for a year now. Oh, wow. So you've learned the ropes, know how things uh, have to be done. That's that's crazy, man. It's not as glamorous as you might think. Oh, it feels bad. Is it... I feel like... So if in the thought process, it sounds like it would be 
a similar type of job as a mechanical engineer. Someone that works on automobiles, except you're doing things on a smaller scale. That's not as big, not smaller scale, but like, you know, a car is fairly heavy and fairly large. You need heavy machinery to be able to work around it. Versus robotics, I feel like it could be, you know, big or small. I don't know. You know, I don't know. That's how I think it's like. But then again, yeah, I really don't know at all, man. I hear you, baby mom, but my kitty cat's awake. Most education I got was from an elective, but they somehow hired me. Hey man, that might just mean that, you know, there's not a lot of people in that field. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. There's not a lot of people in that field, so they just got to take who they can get. Alright, we're starting to crush CO2 right there now. Yes, it's lowering a little bit, I think. And we'd start crushing this again. So what's the coolest thing you guys have built or designed? You guys, the engineers in chat, you guys are... Uh... The thing about being an engineer is that it's tough, but I feel like you have kind of like the most freedom out of all jobs in how you approach things. Because like if you do other things, I feel like it's, it's already solved and you don't really need to innovate. Like you don't have to rebuild the wheel. Versus like something like, you know, when you go into engineering, that's kind of the purpose of the job. You you want to be innovative, uh, innovative in that regard. I don't know. Is, is it like that or am I a little bit delusional? <laughs> oh, look at that. CO2 is getting crushed. Let's go. Nice. Okay, so is this a 7-7? Seven, seven? It is. Nice. Oh, gotcha, Mikey. Gotcha. Don't get fired, man. <laughs> like I said earlier, don't get fired. If that's the case, it's all good. All good. Ah. I see you guys. I see you guys. Yeah, man. Don't get fired, man. Please don't get fired. In school, though, I worked on the National Robotics Team and the National Solar Boat Team. Both was a blast. That sounds like fun, man. That sounds like fun. You get to have... You get to hang out with people that's you know similar uh wavelength if that makes sense you know other engineers get to pick their brain get his you get to see their ideas have them influence your ideas there are uh, some cool projects though and some boring ones ah, yeah so that, i feel like it's true uh, amongst everything though a lot of boring times it's like when you're making sales going going to a place to do a bid might be a little bit fun but doing cold calls might suck <laughs> you know, like when you're trying to get into a bid to get a uh, big customer, that being that might be amazing. You're thinking about the potential raise, commission, things like that. If you see the deal, how long the contract could be, and then it's like you gotta go home, make cold calls, and you're like, ah, I don't want to do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's how I get some of my closest friends. One of them helped me get the job here. Hey, I guess what they say is true. Nepotism, uh, nepotism is never dead. <laughs> it's all about who you know. And, and that's not a shot at anyone or, or at the homie. It's more so that, hey man, if you know someone, you got you got the leg in. And it, it's just still true to this day. Nepotism rules the world. Alright, so I think this is all good. Nice, and then we just do that connection. This is like that. And then now I just need sweeper loaders. Oh yeah. Cool. So let me deconstruct this. I dated a guy in college who built robots to inspect sewers for cracks so they could send a team out to repair. Oh, that's amazing. Gotta work those connections. Yeah, you gotta, man. You gotta. You really got it, man. As much as you think you could do without it, it's tough, man. It's just so much easier if you do have connections. Alright, so we need to power this. I need to make a system. I guess for now it will have to be like this. 
since I don't really have any other way of doing this, and have this go into here. And oh, I'm gonna need another one to auto pick up. Oh yeah, I guess it's fine. I'll get suit soon. I just need to reduce my uh, CO2 level. Dude, man, it feels bad. How did it feel to graduate on the internet and get printed a diploma via fax? <laughs> Fucked up, man. I hate to say it like that. That's what it feels like, though. <laughs> oh, man. You get the diploma and the fax like I did, man? <laughs> I almost dated an aerospace engineer who would spend months building a rocket and thousands of dollars. Oh, that's insane. I mean, if that's what they like doing, though, hobby, passion project, it's it's a, it's a fun time. But man, that's a lot of money, dude. And they go to a park and blow it up. Yeah. I've seen something like that with model airplanes. Where, you know, they'll make very crazy model airplanes. And then uh, they would fly it. But these airplanes wouldn't be made out of like, you know industrial machinery but they would fly fast and fly well however if they get too fast they get ripped up in the air like something to do with like drag if it's too much and the pieces uh, that they use to make it can't handle it and it literally just shreds in the sky it's pretty crazy i've seen the the model airplane ones like that that's pretty cool Never got that. Oh, it feels bad. It was sad, but me and my closest friends are living off campus at the time. So when we shut down in March, we all just kind of hang out for two months straight with no responsibilities. Oh, dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, you know, hanging out with the boys, dude, for two months. Yeah, the air drag, dude, it's pretty crazy, man. So it wasn't like that, right? Because you said rockets. Rockets, I feel like it's more so how, how tall you could launch it. Tall? That's not a good word. How high you could watch it. Watch? No, launch it, launch it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But dude, man, that's awesome. You guys are all, we got some engineers in chat. I see you guys over there. Have you guys ever used your engineering skills at home? Like, uh, you guys know, no, what is it? Uh, Rick and Morty. You know that, you know that scene where, uh, the guy makes the robot and the robot asks, what is my purpose of life and he goes to give me ketchup and he goes oh no and he's like ketchup oh and he just he just squirts out ketchup and he's like oh my life is ketchup have you guys ever engineered something at home to better your own life and what was it what'd you guys do sometimes man you get the life hacks from the engineers in chat <laughs> you guys know what i mean right engineers and life hacks I'm a net engineer. All my house is engineered by me. Wait, a net engineer? What does that mean? Is that internet? What's net engineering? I'm actually not familiar with the term. 100%. Got to get, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Got to help my dad build a few, uh, new deck and grill shack and a bunch of other stuff. I'm nice. It's the butter bot. Oh, it was, uh, it was butter, not ketchup. I'm sorry. I got it wrong. I'm sorry, guys. It was the butter bot. I see, I see. Alright, so this is actually ready. And I could connect this. Now, I need this to be sweep only manual use. And this is industrial lumber. I need to find this. And I know I need to find my lumber. Alright, so we sweep all of this. <laughs> Easy does it. There's, there's too much lumber over there. And then there is lumber here. Do I have lumber on this tile? Network, infrared, internet, LAN, doors, lights, everything. Even taps and fridge. Oh, wow. Wait, hold up. Doesn't that mean if there's a power outage, you're kind of screwed? I'm asking for a friend. Nah, I only do basic automatic and stuff for the house. Okay, okay. Have you guys ever done like a hidden bookcase door using your engineering skills? That's always something I've always wanted to do as a little kid. I, w I wasn't home alone. 
but there there was a there was a movie I saw as a kid where I was like, dude, hidden bookshelf door? That's poggin, yo. And I was a little kid, I wasn't saying that's poggin. I was like, yo, that's awesome. But I feel like that'd be awesome, man. Hidden bookshelf door, dude? Oh, man. Ha not, not have it as a safe room, maybe like an office so that no one bothers you. But yeah, man, I've always wanted to have one of those. Guy at work is uh, building and programming his own stream deck. Oh, wow. See, that's the thing. I heard that's possible. You could technically use another keyboard as a stream deck. And it's like, why wouldn't you? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be easy? I don't know. I don't know. I thought it'd be simple, but if it's if it's taking some time and programming, maybe, you know, I thought it was easier. In reality, it wasn't. I don't have a house for myself yet, so I haven't done any big personal projects, but I'm going to have a bookshelf door in my house one day. Yeah, dude. Life goals, man. You gotta have one of those. And then, you know, you get married, that becomes your man cave. Is that, uh, you know, the boys come over, and you gotta, you know, be away from the wife, whatever, whatever the situation may be. Gotta get the bookshelf door, man. The thing is, is that it's like, Man. The thing I've always thought about is if you actually walk in a house and you try to visualize the layout, I feel like a lot of the times, I mean, not everyone does that. You know, not everyone does that where they walk into a house and try to visualize the spacing and the house and how, how many steps, you know, things like that. But Technically, if you have one of those secret rooms, wouldn't it be easy to kind of figure out like, huh, this wall just kind of ends here. And it's like, we have this pocket that I can't enter. That's kind of suspicious. But I think that, you know, that's not too common that people go into a house and try to think about it that way. It's not a bad idea. Doing it from scratch. Probably not a wife. Gotcha, Mikey. Gotcha, gotcha. But yo, man, I gotta have those bookshelf doors, dude. Guys, how do you guys feel about vaulted ceilings? Where, you know, you live in a two-story house, but for the living room, the ceiling goes all the way up to the roof, so it feels like it's a much bigger house. I've always hated that, because you might get, like, a bug, and it flies to the top. And you can never reach it again. <laughs> Feels weird, man. Depends on where you put it. If it's in the middle of the house, you could easily pass it off as vent pipe stuff behind the wall. Okay. That, that's true. That's true. Some degree. I mean, we used to print circuit boards in the apartment bathtub. What the hell? <laughs> in the bathtub? What? I'm down for vaulted ceilings. But it's a pain to clean. Yeah, cleaning, dust. If you hang something up top, a mosquito gets in, it's all over. Oh, shh. I am overdrawing power right now. And, oh, that's because of that constantly running. Okay. So, let's disconnect the ethanol and get to it over on this side. Yeah, we should be fine. Nice. So, that's no longer going to be overloaded. And we're going to have to ethanol over here. The pipe is blocked. So, auto save lag. I would never do that in my own house. I see you. I see you. Alright, so we're going to get rid of this pipeline now. Because it's not going to be necessary. This auto sweeper is going to be gone as well. As we have it here now. And then because we have the lumber. It is... Going to be fine. Nice, nice. So the ethanol's back into the system. We're going to contain the amount of CO2 we generate now, so this is going to be a lot better. And then... This means that... Yeah, look at that. Oxygen bubble. The CO2 level is actually starting to split. So we're waiting for the gas to fall down. Nice, we're finally including oxygen. Guys, what's the name of this game? Oxygen is not included. We're going to be including it today. Good stuff, good stuff. And hopefully we can be able to uh, fill up the entire map. Not bad. All right, so that change is going to be nice. We're going to get more chlorine generated, but also more oxygen. I should have enough salt to go by for a long time. Yeah, 
30 tons, 15 tons. Really not worried about that. All right. Good stuff, good stuff. So I wanted to do something here. So I need to do that, and I also need to mine that out. Let's let them do that. I will also want probably a ladder here. Probably not. Because we're going to go into this room. Probably, maybe as a meal, meal hall. Uh, probably just eat in here. And then we're going to have our suits be right here. Then at this point, I'm lacking water. Yes, so I do need more water. So there's no more hot areas that require cooling. MC Vin, what's good? Hi, I'm back today. I was here for the first time yesterday for the golfing stream. Yeah, I remember MC Vin. You were uh, witnessing me getting robbed of all my dunks. I should have had two dunks yesterday that I didn't get. I got robbed, man. Feels bad. But we're playing some Oxygen Unincluded today. This is more so one of the main games I stream. This along with City Skylines. So, of course, MC Vin, if you don't know the game, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to help you out. Talk about the game, explain some of the intricacies, or just an overview. But, of course, it's going to be at your discretion. I don't want to force anything down anyone's throats. But hey, welcome back. Hope you're having a good Tuesdays, my friends. All right, so we're taking care of the gas, though. Hey, nice! So you know about the games? Awesome, awesome! Good to have a fan. How do you feel about uh, Don't Starve? Do you have any fans of Don't Starve in chat? I've been thinking about potentially gravitating or over to that game because of the fact that, uh, you know, it's the same studio that makes this game. And I, I pretty much enjoy this. I've heard from other people that Don't Starve is similar once you get to a certain point of the game. So I'm thinking about, you know... Not migrating over and becoming a Don't Starve streamer, but, you know, I'm just, I just heard the idea. I'm like, that's not bad. That's not bad. Oxygen forced down the throat is sometimes necessary. I mean, it's, it's survival instincts, though. Survival instincts. I'm a fan of not starving. Hey, Cthulhu, this guy needs some food. I got you. I played Don't Starve together a few years back with some friends. I didn't get into it too much. Okay. But I like the crossover content they had with Terraria. Okay, okay. So what was it about Don't Start that you didn't enjoy? Was it because you didn't understand what was going on and maybe it was overwhelming, the amount of things you had available to you? If you want to play some played up, hit me up. I got you, Mikey. I actually have... Uh, I'm part of an ambassador program. And I've talked to Lemur about this already. But I am potentially going to be playing some played up soon. But I just need some time. I, I'm lacking some time in uh, how real life is uh, needing me. So yeah, eventually I am looking to check it out. But uh, soon. Not right now though, but soon. Oh sick, awesome, yeah yeah. It's still in early access, right? It was too hard to set up. The gameplay seemed somewhat interesting, but overall too slow for me. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I hear that the beginning is kind of tough, especially for new players. Not knowing what they're going to be able to do, not knowing like the pace of the game, the end game content, how much more is there left to do after a certain point, a lot of things like that. I feel that, I feel that. Alright, so infinite storage for the uh, liquid was good. Cool oxygen. Opened up the top of the space ice. Dreco farm. Okay, I need to cool this down. I might have to bring out my salt water up to there. I'll probably leave it be for now, though. It's not too bad. We don't have plants growing over there. So I'm not too worried yet. Alright, so... Potentially, this was going to be my food storage. So maybe I need to make a uh, food storage right there. What do you think for Oxygen Included speedrun would look like? Let's say rocket launch glitchless ca uh, category. I used to do that. <laughs> I used to do that. I used to do uh, rocket launch speedrun. But the problem with the rocket launch speedrun is that it comes down to a couple of things. Those couple of things are... Do you do it based off of time? Or do you do it based off of cycle count? Right? 
not only that, because of how the game lags, you could technically argue that some of the better computers are better off because of how the game can potentially be a little bit slower on a lower end PC. And then uh, from there, it's kind of like, how would you do anything like that? So because of those things I just mentioned, that's why it's not on speedrun.com. There's no in-game timer, there's only a cycle count, but that's going to vary depending on which speed you're simulating at and how strong your computer is. And then uh, they don't have a high score category over there. In the base game, it would be zero to rocket in less than 100 days. Yes, uh, my record for the rocket launch, what was my high score? High score. My rocket launch high score is 76 cycles. Meaning that in the vanilla game, I was able to launch a rocket in 76 cycles. And what took me the longest was getting the piloting skill. I would have technically had it by cycle 45, but I had to wait 30 cycles to get the piloting skill to even launch the rocket. So that was a struggle. I would assume uh, RTA would be the better time convention. It would, because there's a lot of weird things like cheesing uh, from the printing pod. If you didn't know, you could save before the printing pod gives you a, a choice of what items you get. And if you load the game, you would get a different selection every time. So you could technically cheese that strat and get the perfect item sets so that you have a better progression. But of course, you know, that means a lot of real time has passed. But I feel that. So you would play with a timer, cycle count wouldn't matter. It would basically come down to simulation speed on your computer. And then, uh, yeah, the RTA time. There is a cutscene, so that is a uh, upside. The moment you get the cutscene, right, you uh, are able to hit the timer. And then we could use that as a start stop. But the thing with that is, um, I don't think there's a big speed running community for this game i don't know does anyone play any of the other clay games and or titles and speed run it i'm curious does anyone speed run any of the other clay titles not that it matters but it feels like i've never heard of people running or speed running a clay game Oh, look at that oxygen. This is sweet, dude. Sweet, sweet oxygen. And my door crusher is useless now. That's actually not bad. I don't need to run this anymore. Don't Starve had a bit of speed runs. Is there a leaderboard active? Is there a leaderboard active? I don't think there is, right? I never heard of one. Is there? I mean, if there is a speed running community, there has to be a leaderboard. But yeah, I'm not too familiar with it. My kitty cat Mamba is very angry with me right now. Boss runs in DST? Oh, that could be a thing. That's true. Don't know about that, just saw a random YouTube video. Okay, okay. Now, if uh, Clay wasn't constantly adding content, there would probably be more speedrunners. <laughs> but honestly, Clay has been pretty active and they technically do a lot of things that other companies do, which is fix their game. So if they run into a patch or an issue with something that's exploitable that they don't like, they will actually patch it. So a lot of these speedrun strats that I used to utilize are patched now. <laughs> and I don't think I will ever be able to beat my record. <laughs> So that's the thing with clay games, I, I feel like. Because they're they're good devs, they're not going to let us keep any of the exploits. Feels weird, but that's, I think, the truth. Because honestly, man, they patched some of the strats for Oxygen Included in the recent update, the uh, Fast Friends patch. And I, I was kind of sad about it. <laughs> there used to be an exploit that allows you to mine this. Now, this resource, Neutronium, has what's called the infinite mining time, or used to. 
So basically it means that although you could start mining it, you will never finish because it would never progress on the progression bar. It actually takes an infinite amount of time. Now, because of that, um, there is actually something called an overjoyed reaction in this game that allows you to instantly complete any task. So people found out that you could put a mining job on this, instantly mine it out with that uh, overjoyed reaction, and then you would get experience for your duplicates on the skill tree. So this skill tree, the amount of experience you get is determined by how long you're working. So if you skip a job that technically spends an infinite amount of time, you technically get maximum skill points and you underflow the game. You get negative 4 million something skill points and then your duplicate is, you know, they could, they could basically spend it on the entire tree. So that was a trick I wanted to utilize in the vanilla game so that I would be able to immediately get rocket launching from cycle like 20. So it would be, uh, just be a race of how fast I could actually build a steam engine and then launch it because I would be able to have the skill points at that point. Because the biggest thing with doing a rocket launch speedrun in the vanilla game was was having the rocket piloting skill. So they that got patched. You can't mine this anymore. If I put a mine job on this, it gets canceled automatically. So that got patched out. So I'm kind of mad. <laughs> Food was patched too. Food was patched too, but I found a way around it that I'm not really too mad about. You can, uh, you can, you can, you can. I believe that's still a thing, but I haven't tried it. But the thing is, is that I think you could only shred two at a time. Because what it is, is that when your rocket is launching, you have, I think it's a three by one, or it's a three tile wide or a five tile wide radius. However, your rocket engines could be seven tile wide. So that extra tile has to go through the map and it breaks the material that is Neutronium. I believe that still works, but I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, that was, that was a glitch that I'm kind of mad. <laughs> Feels bad, man. I, I would love to utilize that still. All right, guys, this is going to be a great stop for me to wrap things up for the night. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. But before we do that, any other questions in chat? Anything you guys want to ask before we wrap things up? Because this was uh this was a fun time, man. Shout out to Lemur for the raid. Thank you for uh you guys being in chat. Agent Vixen, TW Fed, I mean TW TW Fed, you've been here. And uh X Kage, you too. Always you call it you too. But like uh Lil Annabelle, we have Agent Vixen, MC Vin came back, BT Mikey, thank you guys, man, for hanging out for uh after the Lemur raid, man. I have to say thank you for the help anytime dude i'm happy to help you guys out uh of course uh of course all you have to do is just watch my streams <laughs> and support me whenever you can but of course if you guys can't if you guys are just able to just watch i'm more than happy to just have you guys here and of course don't forget to check out the youtubes especially if you like the oni content but of course guys that's gonna be it for me today we didn't get to the food storage like I wanted to, but we did deal with the CO2 and relocate the ethanol, so that's a that's a plus. So I'm happy with that improvement at the very least. We're starting the second row of trees, made a little bit of progress with that. Infinite pressure on my cool slush geyser. Mamba's yelling on the background, you might hear him. And we also did a little bit of progress on the mining. It's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Got a little bit of research done as well. A little bit of refined metals. But I think we're going to have to do proper food storage the next time. I'll grab the grub fruit. Alright, alright. Thanks for the stream. Thank you guys for hanging out.